We're talking on this program about the meaning of life and particularly about the place of free will in our own lives. And we've reached the point, you remember, where in discussing the explanation that the supreme being behind the universe gave to this old man Moses centuries and centuries ago, we've come to that point in the discussion where the, the presentation of free will is made as something that the creator of the universe saw essential to his purpose in first creating us. His purpose in first creating us was that we would be his friends. That's it. That we would love him, that we would know him, that he would love us, know us, that we would enjoy each other. That's why he made us. That's why he made you. You're not here to fix pipes if you're a plumber, primarily. You're not here to... uh, put wires into plugs if you're an electrician, primarily. You're not here to reformat uh, drive C if you're a computer expert. You're here primarily to become like your creator so that actually you and he will be at home with each other in timelessness. That's it. And uh, that's why he made us with a free will because he himself has a free will. And he wanted people who would love him because they chose to love him. Indeed, that's the only meaning of love. There is no such love except uh, what comes from a free will. And so he made us like himself with his own capacities, and then he gave us the choice of becoming like him or not becoming like him. And you remember we said he presented that as the choice between true trees. It's described that way back in Genesis in chapter 2 and verse 16. There are two trees, and he said you may eat of the tree of life, but you mustn't eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. And we've been talking about what that tree of life symbolized, because that was how God presented it to mankind in his childhood. Today he might have presented it as some uh, computer formulae that we would have to uh, examine or analyze or put into our uh, IBM uh, XT. But uh, he presented it then as uh, the choice between two trees. And uh, one was the tree of life, and he uh, said that we should eat of the tree of life. And the tree of life really is, for one thing, himself, his own friendship. Just the way you and I become more like each other, the more we talk with each other and the more we come to know each other, just the way a husband and wife become more like brother and sister after 10 years of living with each other because we just imitate each other naturally and especially we imitate what we love and admire. So it was his plan that as we would just walk with him through our lives, we would become more and more like him. And that was actually his plan, you know. His plan was that... We would develop this world by his directions and by reading his mind. That was it. I don't know if you remember the great uh, commission to have authority over the world that is uh, recorded way back in that book of Genesis in uh, chapter 1 and verse 28, but it runs like this, and God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the birds of the air and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. And the Creator actually wanted us to do that, to subdue the world and to fill it, and to bring it to completion, and in a sense to complete the creation that he had started, to bring it into order under his will through our close relationship with him. He knew where the gold was. He knew where the oil was. He knew that if you tried to get the oil out of the California coast off Santa Barbara, you'd end up drowning the seagulls in oil when there were oil spills. So he knew where to get the oil safely. He knows what is under the Antarctic wastes. He knows how to develop the Sahara Desert. And his plan was that we would intuitively stay so close to him that we would actually know what he was thinking and we would be able to read his mind and he would be able to put into us his own intuitive thoughts And we would therefore begin to develop the world as he guided us. 
It's interesting, isn't it, that a, a man like Einstein, of all people, uh, said all ideas come from God. And, of course, any of us that have done, tried to do any kind of philosophical thinking know that's a fact, that even though we talk about uh, inductive logic and deductive logic, yet we have a strange sense that there is no such thing as inductive logic. It's the whole basis of the scientific method, but we suspect that the philosophers are right who say there is no such thing as inductive logic. There's only deductive logic. In other words, sometime during the night, some mysterious process takes place in a brain of Einstein, and he wakens up in the morning with the solution or with a hypothesis that he then begins to test deductively and find out if it's really true. But where that first hypothesis comes from is a, quite a mystery. And any of us, of course, who have had ideas that uh, form the solution to things always find that. It doesn't matter whether it's Sinclair or whether it's Cray and his computers in Minneapolis. It doesn't matter whether it's uh, old Einstein or whether it's Lloyd Wright. It doesn't matter who, whether it's uh, Weber who writes such magnificent music, or whether it's Rubinstein. It doesn't matter who the origin, originator of the creator creation is. Uh, all of them admit there's something mysterious in the actual concept. It seems at times to come from nowhere. And, of course, that was the way the creator meant us all to operate. He meant us all to operate from that fresh origin of thought, and of reasoning that came from his own mind. And, of course, that's why he said, fill the earth, because we would fill it with his own ideas. We would fill it with his own deep, complex, intricate knowledge of the bases of the natural universe. And, therefore, we would develop it in ways that would be beautiful and that would be fulfilling for us, and that would be harmonizing for the rest of the creatures in the universe. And so drink, eating of the tree of life means partly that we would have started to live our lives in a close relationship with the Creator, and we would be guided by Him intuitively rather than by our own cleverness. And uh, in other words, the Creator, you could picture it this way, though it is probably even more childish than the way we tend to think of the early chapters of Genesis, but it was as if Adam would be in the garden and God's plan was that he would say to Adam, Adam, see that tree over there, orange tree? Take some of the fruit, squeeze it, and the juice is really nice, and you'll have a healthy, refreshing drink each morning. And Adam would do that. In the same way, the Creator would be so close to Adam and he would be so close to the Creator and they'd have such friendship with each other and they'd talk to each other so continuously that the Creator would say, see that river over there, it's going to flood in the springtime. So I want you to dam it up and redirect it that way. Adam would do it. That's part of what living off the tree of life means. It means getting the directions from the originator of the universe through a relationship with him, through a relationship of thought and of feeling and of, of course, first of all, believing that he exists and then of treating him as really existing and then we would begin to find he would feed his own thoughts through our thoughts. And that is part of what the tree of life symbolizes. It symbolizes much more than that, but at least it symbolizes that. For instance, some people can see that the tree of life is what we call the spirit of God. It's his spirit. It's his very, the very heart of him. It's the very essence of God. It's the kind of person he is. I mean, he's the bright person that has made little Yorkshire terriers, has made little babies' fingers, has made the breakers on the coasts of Australia, has made the Hawaiian surf. He's the exciting creator that has made these exciting things, who is more exciting than any of his creation, and receiving of his spirit means receiving that spirit within us. It's that spirit of the open ocean and the fresh breezes that blows through your own heart and spirit and gives you the freshness and the life of the creator. That's part of what uh, eating of the tree of life is concerned with. So that, the creator said, we were to choose to do. In other words, we were to choose to either live in close relationship with him and develop the world that way, 
or to choose to live independent of him and deliver, de develop it our own way. Let's talk a little more tomorrow about what we actually